Hello everybody and welcome to Lights Up. I'm Grantley Bernard alongside Desi Globitz. The Canberra Capitals keep losing, the Dandenong Rangers and the Bendigo Spirit keep winning. And even on this weekend, Desi, we had thunder and lightning. Oh, we had thunder and lightning. Some big wins up there. Were some big wins. The lightning went 0-2 on the weekend and uh, that was a bit of a surprise. No Susie Bakovic in either of those games, which we will touch on a little bit later. Mm. Talk us through the round of games. Sure. Uh, Canberra Capitals 62 going down to the Dandenong Rangers 101. For the Caps, Michelle Cozier had 22 points and 12 rebounds. For the Rangers, Monica Wright had 20 points. And the Rangers killing Canberra in the second half 49 to 27. Townsville Fire 73 over the Adelaide Lightning 70. A narrow win at home there for the Fire with Rachel Flanagan um, coming up with some huge baskets down the stretch, including the go ahead threes, uh, finishing with 22 points. Uh, for the Lightning, Nadine Payne had 18 points. No Susie Batkovic in that game. Sydney Flames, 67, lost at home to the Dandenong Rangers, 89. For Dandenong's second win of the weekend. For the Flames, April Sykes continued her good form with 25 points. And for the Rangers, Monica Wright finished a fantastic weekend with 31 points, shooting 9 of 12 from the field and 12 of 12 from the foul line. Bendigo Spirit did it easily at home, 84 against Bulleen Boomers, 67. Kelsey Griffin had 26 points and 13 boards there for Bendigo. And Elise Penaluna had 18 points in just 17 minutes on her return from injury. The Logan Thunder had a probably a surprise win at home there against the Adelaide Lightning, 86 to 59. And Emma Langford um, continued her good form with 25 points and eight rebounds. For the Lightning, again without Susie Bakovic, Laura Hodges had 15 points and nine rebounds. Really a big weekend in a lot of ways in the WNBL, but as we said at the top of the show, Bendigo and Dandenong just keep on winning. Bendigo at 14 and two in first place on the ladder from Dandenong at 13 and three. Then Adelaide, 11 and six, those two losses, uh, like we said, just put a little gap now between third and second. Townsville holding on to fourth place at nine and seven. And then some work to do for Bulleen at seven and 10 and Logan at six and 10. And then you would think, Sydney at 5 and 11, Canberra at 5 and 11, and West Coast at 3 and 13 have probably shot their bolt for the playoffs for this season, Desi. Do you think so? I Yeah, I think they probably have. I think Bulleen and Logan are probably the only two clubs that could catch Townsville, but they're, they're two games clear right now, Townsville, which um, is a bit of a surprise, and perhaps I didn't give them enough credit earlier on in the season, but they, they're proving me wrong right now, and they're doing a great job in the last few rounds. We, we've talked uh, all season long about the quality of the imports that have come into the league and didn't let us down again this weekend. Uh, Monica Wright had two massive games for Dandenong, uh, 20 points against the Caps, and she backs up with 31 points, 11 boards, seven assists against the Flames. In that same game, April Sykes had 25 points. And for Bendigo, Kelsey Griffin had 26 points, 13 boards in the win over Bulleen. And I think um, another one was uh, Cohen from up in Logan had another 20 plus point game. So. Um, there's some fantastic imports. That's not to mention the, the Kiwis that are doing a good job around the league as well in, in Nat Taylor and, um, and the two girls over in Perth. So there's some really fantastic imports in the league and, and creating a, a really strong league this year, which is great to watch. Let's move on to our talking points. And I guess another one that does come out of the weekend's results is that Townsville seems to be gathering momentum in a bid to lock down fourth spot. We probably didn't give them a lot of love early in the season. Should we be loving them a bit more now, Desi? Well, I think we do need to, to love them a little bit more now. They're, they're doing a fantastic job, and, and I think they've certainly been helped by Bulleen's poor, poor form of late. Um, but I'd be interested to look at Townsville's run home and see how many of those games are, are up in Townsville, and I think that'll certainly help them to hang on to fourth spot if they are up there. But they're, they're getting some, some good, good results from all around in their players mm. at the moment, and they're, they're, they're looking the goods to hang on. Now put yourself in Karen Dalton's shoes for a minute. You turn up for the game on the weekend and they say, Jenna O'Hay's not playing for Dandenong. And you think, well, I might have caught a break here. <laughs> and then Monica Wright turns up with her 31 and 11 and seven and mm. shoots the lights out, doesn't miss a free throw. Does that just underline the exceptional depth that Dandenong has and that's why they might be the only team that can beat Bendigo for the title. Look, I think it does. And certainly um, without Jenna playing, Sydney would have given themselves a chance there in that game. They have been playing quite well Sydney lately as well. But, geez, Monica Wright just came out and went bang, didn't she? And 
Um, I think it's a huge credit to Dan Inong's depth. I mean, you, you look down that bench and they've just got players all over the place that can, can come out and play and can come out and light up numbers. And, you know, that's not to mention Steph Cummings or any of the other girls that are putting up good numbers regularly every week. And the fortunate thing for Dan Inong is with McLeod and O'Hay just being able to dish the ball so well. I mean, they're one and two leading the league in assists at, I think, six a game. They're just able to find their shooters. They're beautiful shooters, and, and um, I certainly wouldn't foul Monica right either. It doesn't look like she has too much trouble from the foul line. Pretty calm from the foul line. Adelaide's a big story. 0-2 on the weekend. No Susie Bakovic in either game. Mm. Is it too simple to say no Bakovic, no Adelaide? I think it is too simple. I think that um, Susie's a phenomenal player, and she certainly is putting up huge numbers week in, week out. But I think... Given a bit of time without Susie, Adelaide would adjust. I think when you lose a player like that, the first couple of games are really hard because so many balls are going into that person because they're such a prolific scorer and you just need some time to, I guess, work out what, where and what your other options are. I guess the, uh, the bonus for Adelaide, if you like, is that they've got someone like Laura Hodges mm. on the roster, an Olympian, a world championship player, who then, I guess, just fills into the Batkovich role and, yeah. and can do a good job for you. Yeah, she certainly can, and, and I guess they need to rely, without Susie Moore on their perimeter players, you know, someone like Jenny Screen, who, very unselfish player, does all the little things, but she can step up and score. It's just, you know, she needs to know that she needs to do that in, in Susie's absence. Same with Hill, Marino, those guys can all... Can They've all got the plenty of experience. Plenty That's of experience. That's the bottom line, isn't it? It is. Now, no big surprise with this one, but it does look like mm -hmm. Lauren Jackson is done for the season. She won't suit up for the Canberra Capitals in the WNBL. Uh... They've lost eight in a row. Mm. Can you see a win for them anywhere? They've got the Doomsday Double this weekend, Adelaide and West Coast. I actually thought, we sat back here a few weeks ago and, and they were headed for Perth and we thought they might rebound after a massive loss at the hands of Sydney, I think. And they didn't. They went over to Perth and lost, so I, I couldn't even put my money on that at the moment. But again, they've, they've got some fantastic players. Bibby can light it up. Wilson's scoring has been a little bit down. Perhaps she could step up a bit or... Um, Bridget Ardossi's had a good season inside. They've, they've got the players there if they get on a roll, but I dare say at Canberra their confidence is fairly low at the moment and um, the Doomsday Double may not do much to uh, lift the confidence there, no, unfortunately. I think it's a good point you make about Bridget Ardossi. She has been very, very solid. Mm. And she's, I guess in a lot of ways, carried the inside load for Canberra that they would have been expecting that Jackson would have taken a fair share of. Yeah, yeah, she has, but in, in a different way than we're used to with the, with the Capitals. We're used to, for the past few years, these two tall timbers inside and they, they just haven't had anything like that. And um, she's doing a fantastic job and interesting to see the article on the WNBL website about her this week. She sounds like a very co colourful character and many and varied interests. It was quite an entertaining read. So, yeah, look forward to seeing more of her in the WNBL in the future. I think she'll be sticking around for quite a while. I think she's mm. gained a lot of uh, admirers with the way she plays. She she's certainly has. a pretty tough competitor. She doesn't cut any corners. Yes, and, well, uh, they breed them tough in Altona. I think um, her and Rachel Jarry are a tribute to that. So it certainly is point. tough. <laughs> fair point. As you mentioned, the WNBL website, you can follow the league on the website, wnbl.com.au. You can also follow on the Facebook page and on Twitter. And we like to get our viewer feedback and questions to uh, everyone on the show, whether it be Desi Globitz at, on her Twitter account, at Desi Globitz six. 6, or Sharon Milner 4. And this week's prize for the best question that we have uh, been sent in from our viewers, uh, we'll receive a $100 skins pack, which is pretty good. Desi, not bad, not bad. Not bad. And the question that we have picked out is from Elise Strawn on the Twitter. And she wants to know, if the Olympics were next week, what starting five would you select on current WNBL form? Mm. I've got my team. I don't know about you. Yeah, I've got mine. I had a little bit of trouble, though. It wasn't easy. I like, I like to sit on the fence, and I wasn't able to do that. So uh, it was a well, bit let's of a have tough it. one. Let's have it. Well, I have gone with Harrow in the one. That was fairly obvious. Um, Magden in the two, although I, I with an asterisk because I know that she's been playing the whole season in the one, um, which is leaving out a player of the quality of Kath McLeod, but unfortunately we can't have a team full of point guards. Um, Jenna O'Hay, no surprises there in the three. Um, I went with Richards in the four. She's, she's had a, a good season, a solid season. Um, I think Penaluna was probably close and just hasn't probably put enough time together due to her injuries, but certainly her form's been very promising. Um, and no surprises in the five spot with Big Sue's. 
No, it's a fair call. And if, if I had to pick, I'd go Harrower. I'd have McLeod as the two. And then uh, Magin. So I've basically got three guards, but three good perimeter players, shooters. Sure. Oh, hey, can play the four, but she can play anywhere. <laughs> yeah, she, she can play anywhere. And the, and the back girl at the five. Yeah. And Richards and Emma Langford coming off the bench as my mm-hmm. six and seven. So Fairly close. I think they'd, uh, that's not a bad uh, Opals lineup. I think, if they had to pick a team for next week. It'd be, be a fairly small Opals lineup. I, I'm not sure which team we're playing against, but it'd be, um, be a very talented team. It would be. Anyway, the Skins prize pack goes to Elise Strawn. Don't forget... Send in your questions for Lights Up. You can do that via the WNBL Facebook page or the uh, league Twitter uh, account, which is at WNBL. Week 14 coming up, Desi, we're slowly, slowly, slowly getting towards the playoffs. And there's some big, big games coming up this weekend. Talk us through them. Certainly can. On Friday night, the job doesn't get any easier for the Capitals going to Adelaide. Bendigo Spirit take on the Sydney Flames at home. On Saturday night, Bulleen hosts the Dandenong Rangers in the crosstown match there. The West Coast Waves host the Canberra Capitals for their second game of the weekend. On Sunday, the Logan Thunder and the Bendigo Spirit will be an interesting game on Logan's current form and a a tough split there for Bendigo, uh, one at home and one away. And then uh, to finish up the round, the Dandenong Rangers at home to the Sydney Flames. Some really good games and like you say, Logan and Bendigo that could be a real tricky one for, mm. for Bendigo. So uh, look out for that one. And of course, the Melbourne Derby between the Boomers and the Rangers always could get ugly. Has a little bit of spice uh, <laughs> involved in that one. As we said before, don't forget the WNBL. You can get everything at wnbl.com.au. You can get on the Facebook page and the Twitter account at WNBL. Desi, the sponsors have been with us all throughout the season. And they all start with. IINet, Champion, ABC, Australian Sports Commission, Sporting Pulse, Spalding, and ANFA. That is it. As we said, we are slowly, slowly getting towards the playoffs and things are really going to start warming up. Can Bulleen and Logan mount a challenge to Adelaide and Townsville? I guess we're going to find out this weekend. We'll tell another story. Come back and see us next week and we will see if we can fully explain that story better than we did this week on Lights Up.